how long can you actually store fuel down there in your tank? What is the shelf life of petrol? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their brand new cars. Hit me up on the website. That. This question is inspired by a loyal viewer from the bulimic isle of reluctant Brexitania. You friggin' Irish. I do not know how you can even look at yourselves in the mirror. You are the 20th largest island in the world. What sort of a claim is that? I would argue it's nothing. Now, you Irish, you don't even have wildlife that kills. And this, I think you'd agree, is the defining characteristic of any great nation. I actually went to tripsavvy.com and searched dangerous animals in Ireland as part of my diligent research for this A-grade beer garden physics and chemistry report. Do you know what the number one hit is? I mean, have a friggin' guess. Dangerous animals in Ireland. That's right. Out of control Irish pussy. I'm not making that up. It is. Visit Ireland, have fun, but keep the dangerous out of control Irish pussy at arm's length. If you know what's good for you, that feral pussy. That could be a Guy Ritchie movie now that I think about it. Perhaps the long-awaited sequel to the great movie Snatch. Hello from Ireland. I'm guessing that with your surname you have Irish blood in you. May I ask for your help, which I'd be happy to pay for, regarding unleaded petrol and the fact that it degrades or goes off if left standing in an undriven vehicle for, say, three to six months. Can you please tell me what I should do in these circumstances? Absolutely no need to pay, James. Just make a donation instead to the IPCF, the Irish Pussy Control Foundation. Quite a worthwhile charity, as I understand it. Now, taking your points in order, yeah, we're all former convicts from your neck of the woods. Down here, obviously. So perhaps I do have some Irish blood in me, as well as, I'd like to think, on me, genealogically speaking. Because it was all brutal back then in the Dark Ages, wasn't it? One of my ancestors, a chap named Isaac Tarr, disgracefully enough, was a Royal Marine who cracked the whip on the First Fleet, so I feel quite cheated in terms of my deserved proper convict heritage. And perhaps this is why I have never really fitted in down here. I don't know. I can only hope that further back in the past there were some properly murderous, axe-wielding Viking genes in my own personal pool. That would explain a lot too, I think you'd agree. So, look, Getting to the point, I think this contention that fuel goes off is largely bullshit. It's actually fairly inert stuff if you store it properly. So, talking about unleaded petrol here, aka gasoline, just for the moment, gasoline, modern automotive fuel systems are effectively sealed to limit their evaporative emissions, and they've been this way for years now, so statistically, every car on the road, just about, has a sealed fuel system. And evaporation is the biggest potential problem with storing petrol. The more volatile components of that mixture, which is a cocktail, okay, they just evaporate off first, and what's left is a kind of heavier, higher density hydrocarbon blend, which requires a different air fuel ratio, and it just burns differently. The octane rating changes as well. But there's effectively zero evaporation in a modern fuel system and the same thing in an approved fuel storage container because they're sealed too. Those jerry cans and other approved containers, they manage expansion with an airspace and also the inherent flexibility of the walls of the container, be they steel or plastic. It's a different story, I guess, in your lawnmower because lawnmowers, typically the older ones, they manage expansion by punching a hole in the top of the fuel filler cap and the fuel can therefore evaporate away endlessly all through the cooler months when you're not turning and burning and keeping the lawn in check. 
I guess there's a small amount of oxidation in these sealed environments, like inside your car. So say you've got a 60 litre tank, okay? There could be some oxidation there, but I'd put it to you, probably not very much. If you've got that 60 litre tank and it's got 30 litres of fuel in it, so about half a tank, it's also got 30 litres of air in it as well, okay? Because half empty, half full, whatever. 30 litres of air is about 6 litres of oxygen gas because air is about 20% oxygen, which is very little in the context of the ability to do oxidation on the fuel. So that's going to be trivial and we'll just lay that out, okay? So just spitballing it for context, 30 litres of petrol weighs about 22 kilograms and 22 kilos of fuel requires about 300 kilos of air to oxidize fully inside your engine, okay? In practice, air fuel ratio is gonna be about 13 to one by mass. Air is about 1.2 kilos for a thousand liters. So you are actually gonna need, incredibly enough, about 240,000 liters of air to oxidize 30 liters of petrol completely, and you've got 30 liters of air down there in the tank if it's half full. So given the air availability in a half full tank, you can oxidize only about one ten thousandth of the fuel that remains in the tank in that sealed environment. And I think you'd agree that's negligible. In a modern car, therefore, evaporation and oxidation are completely insignificant. And the only other mechanism I can think of which might degrade the fuel in some way is internal destabilization, like something in the fuel reacts with something else because some of the additives don't play well with others over the long term. In fact, BP says the storage life of petrol is one year when stored under shelter in a sealed container. Once a seal is broken, the fuel has a storage life of six months at 20 degrees C or three months at 30 degrees C. So I think we can all infer that destabilization of the fuel is not really a thing. And it seems to me that in all of their advice on fuel shelf life that I could find, fuel companies do not really address the matter of in a car. They all talk about some hypothetical sealed container, whatever that is, and however it relates to the practical real world. BP goes on, the storage life of petrol in equipment fuel tanks is one month. This can be extended by topping up with one third of fresh fuel, which restores the volatile components that have evaporated. I am not entirely certain that a quote, equipment fuel tank is the same thing as the fuel tank in your car, because there are regulatory standards to prevent evaporative emissions from cars, and therefore there is negligible evaporation. And I'd further suggest to you that fuel does not go off in the manner of the milk left out in the friggin' sun. Now for you Brexitanians and sundry Irish who are not cowering under the bed in terror to protect yourself from a rabid pack of wild Irish pussy, the sun is a big bright thing just up there in the sky, which is typically viewable elsewhere on earth at times. And I'd suggest to you that really this is a thing, it does exist, just up there, above the overcast, you'll just have to trust we Australians on that. So, even if a little of the more volatile end of the fuel manages to evaporate off, modern cars have knock sensors, and what they're going to do, therefore, is retard the timing to protect the engine from pinging under load. And they've got mass airflow sensors and all of this stuff, okay? And the best hedge here is... If you leave your car inoperative for some protracted length of time, just whip off down to the local filling station and top off the tank with the highest octane fuel you can find at the earliest opportunity after restarting. That's gonna pump up the octane and restore the volatile components if you've lost any of those to evaporation. And I'd make one final point here about ethanol blended fuel, right? E10 to E85, depending on where on earth you live. Ethanol is hygroscopic, okay, meaning it sucks up and mixes with water, water in the air. So the main risk here is that if you live in a humid place and humid air gets into the fuel tank as you 
use fuel, obviously that gap is replaced by air. So if that air is humid, when it cools down overnight, the water might condense out to some degree and mix with the ethanol in the fuel. And if this process goes on for some time unchecked, this thing called phase separation can occur phase separation, okay? And what this means is you get a light layer of mainly petrol with a small amount of ethanol and it floats on top of a smaller but heavier layer of ethanol and water. It's like oil and water not mixing. They just separate out, okay? And this is far more common in boats, which is why you should never use ethanol blended fuels in boats. Phase separation is kind of bad because if the heavy watery layer gets big enough, it's going to get sucked into the engine and then basically it's going to be hell on earth, you know, dogs and cats living together, the full Caligula style friggin' orgy of mechanical unpleasantness. Nobody wants that, except of course your mechanic and tow truck operators. They love it. So, if I was going to leave a car or any other implement inactive for some protracted period, I would A, probably not run it at all on ethanol blended fuel, and B, I'd be topping it off with fresh fuel ASAP if I forgot to comply with A above and let E whatever stagnate for some time in the tank. You know, if you've done that, just top it off as soon as possible. It's the best you can do. Now, before I let you go, just for completeness on diesel, all right? Diesel is not volatile in the manner of petrol, gasoline, miracle. So evaporation's not really going to be a factor. According to BP, again, the main problem with diesel fuel in open containers is that moisture from condensation will create a favourable environment for fungus and bacteria that degrade the fuel. The simple solution is regular treatment with a biocide every six months when storing for lengthy periods. BP adds that diesel in storage is also susceptible to the formation of gums and sediments that can block filters and that this is generally associated with that diesel going darker in colour over time. The company adds that diesel stored undercover in sealed containers can be expected to last 12 months, but it may in fact last significantly longer than that. So my take on this last point is that if you are that blue singlet knob and you know the kind of person of whom I speak. You've seen them down under. The aspirational Mick Dundee wannabe bogan devoted habitually to whipping the outback into submission. Yes, <laughs> with Shazza proudly on his arm in his <coughs> small cock substitute Ford Ranger wild track or whatever, you know, vehicles of that nature. Given the complexity and repair cost of modern diesel fuel systems, which is a heart stopper, let's face it, do not be a cheapskate and use that old diesel that you've had percolating in the shed since the dinosaurs roamed among us. Which was never, except of course if you're also a dog shit dumb creationist asshole. On the way back from your latest Outback adventure, tip that range-extending diesel in jerry cans down the neck of your ah! small cockmobile and arrive home to your fibro mansion in the outer suburbs with empty jerrys, the better to prepare for Monday morning at Centrelink so you can save up on us and do it all again next year. Yes. If that doesn't get the creationist dipshits, the mad Irish and their out-of-control pussies and every blue singlet bogan here in Shitsville passionately engaged as a hater on this most fine channel, I don't know what will. In truth, you know, as your next prime mincer, I love you all in an emphatically non-fag way. And remember, you know, in the week ahead, after you've digested this message, you know, it's Monday tomorrow, hate Mondays, in the week ahead, do whatever you can to... It's just there, isn't it? There, 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 slightly out of focus. Anyway, do whatever you can to make Australia less shit. I'm counting on you. Yes.